Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Jeremy here, and it's time for us to start building out our whole environment. So before we begin, we want to make sure our menu interface that we created in our last session is properly located in our space. In order to do so, there's one important tool we need to cover, viewpoints. Now, when you first came into Shapes, you probably noticed this floating head here with the number one above it. This is a viewpoint. A viewpoint is a specific geographic location in your scene from where users will view your prototype. So you can move this viewpoint around by grabbing it just like you would an object, and you can place it anywhere you want in the scene. Now, to access the viewpoints menu, just click on the scene icon here and then choose this viewpoint tab. To jump into the viewpoint, click on the teleport button. And just like our regular teleport system, when you jump into a viewpoint, you are automatically rescaled at 100%. So now I'm seeing exactly what a user of my prototype will see. So I'm at proper location, proper scale in the scene, so everything's looking exactly how it should. I can also add additional viewpoints to a scene by pressing this plus button and uh, I can put it anywhere I want. And then to teleport to a different viewpoint, I just choose the desired viewpoint from the menu and press the teleport button. So deleting a viewpoint, it's easy. Just select the viewpoint you wish to delete from the menu and press the trash icon button. Now on a side note, viewpoint one is the location where users will automatically spawn into your environment when they first enter your project. So be mindful of where you place that. All right, let's set this viewpoint aside for just a second and let's place our menu in its proper location. So to do this, we're gonna use the inspector. So the first thing I wanna do is group all of these objects together. To do that, I activate my selection tool and I'm gonna move my thumbstick to the right to activate my selection bubble, hold down on my trigger button and select my entire menu. Once selected, the inspector automatically appears on my main menu. So from this menu, I'm going to select group and we're gonna ungroup them in a second, but for now, I want shapes to treat our entire menu as one object. Now from the inspector, I'm going to access the transform section and set the position and rotation, all of these coordinates to zero. And you can see now that my menu appears in the exact center of my project. We might adjust the position later on, but let's go ahead and set the Y axis to one meter and the Z axis to 0.75. And let's set the Y rotation to 15 degrees. Okay, after we've done that, let's go ahead and move our viewpoint to the center of the room and place it roughly in front of our menu. And when we teleport to that viewpoint, we're getting the first glimpse of what users will see when they interact with our prototype. Okay, let's start creating our environment by first locking our menu in place here. So select the group of objects, and then from this drop down menu here, choose lock. And now this group of objects can't move or accidentally get selected. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to position myself so that the menu we created is facing away from me. I'm doing this simply for the ease of demonstration. So we're going to build this environment entirely from elements that are already available in Shapes. So let's start by accessing the Assets Library and then click on Architecture. And we're going to use this half room here. Now this isn't a drawable shape, so we're going to use our grip button to grab it off the menu and place it in the scene. And just like how we snap the buttons to the front of the back plate, we're going to do the same thing here, except this time we're going to snap the room to the floor like this. And then we're going to move it so that our menu is roughly in the center of the room and uh, maybe, maybe slightly closer to the back wall. We can always readjust it later. All right, let's add a few more elements here. Let's go back to uh, our models here and choose furniture. And let's grab this desk here. I'm going to snap it to the floor and move it so our menu is just floating over the surface of the desk towards the back. All right, let's grab a chair here. So this one's good. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to scroll to the bottom here and grab this shelf. And let's snap it to the wall and make a few duplications. And then let's go back to our 3D model folder and choose decorations and add this lamp to the desk. And then how about this lamp here? I'll snap it to the floor. And then while holding it, I'll use the thumbstick to scale it up a little bit and I can put it in the corner here. All right, our environment is starting to shape up. So now let's use the color tool and go in and change the shading and color on some of these objects.
All right, let's also change the color of our overall environment as well. So from your shapes menu, choose the 3D primitives and let's scroll down towards the bottom and choose this inverted sphere here. And let's uh, go ahead and recolor it to a nice sky blue and then place it somewhere in the center of the scene. And then using the gizmo, I'm gonna scale it up until it encompasses my little world here. And lastly, I just want to show you two ways you can create shadows and highlights in your scene. So from your menu, choose the settings icon and then go up here to the environment tab. And here you can edit the sun. I can grab this tiny little sphere here with my trigger button, move it around, and you can see the direction of the shadows changing in my environment. And I can also control the intensity of the sun and the intensity of the shadows. So for this next part, I'm going to just turn the shadows off so you can see what I'm going to do better. And I'm going to go over here to my assets library, click on the UI folder and shadows and glows. And in here, we have a lot of PNG transparencies that you can recolor and use for shadows and highlights. So for example, I'm going to choose this square here and uh, just recolor it and then snap it to the surface and rescale it and then place it under the chair and there you go. All right, this is a great start. In our next lesson, we're going to cover scenes. So feel free to start the next lesson now or take a few minutes and add your own flair to this environment to make it uniquely your own. So have fun creating and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye everybody.